What's up everyone and welcome to the club. Today we'll be exploring texture and scales by drawing Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. For today's lesson, I'll be using this mechanical pencil with this 2B graphite stick, but you're welcome to use any pencil you're most comfortable with. So we want to begin today's lesson by blocking out the basic shape of the head. So let's start in the center of the page. We're going to sketch out a circle. Starting from the very top, we want to stay loose. The circle doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get the right size and placement in the center of the page. And I can always go back and just refine the shape. Just smoothing this out. Again, we're going to be eventually racing this out, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Now from here, we're sketching the spine and the back of the neck. Let's start on the top of the circle. We want to start by curving this up towards the right. Come around the side. Now it's going to bend that back in towards the bottom of our page. You can see that I'm using these short lines to create that shape. From the bottom of our circle, let's step up towards the right. We're going to follow that same curve, coming around, bend this in, and then down towards the bottom of our page. Let's add a seam in the center of the body. So we're going to start out here. It's going to go in between these two curves, coming around and then down. Now, on the top right side of our circle, we're going to draw a straight angled line coming down, across the middle, and then out towards the edge of the beat to right about there. And from the end, I'm just going to bend this up and across the top of the nose. Let's bend this across. And I'm just going to bend that up towards the outside of our circle. From the top of the head, draw a straight angle line going across. And I'm just going to pull this out towards the end of the antler. Let's flatten off the end. And I just want to taper this so it gets wider as you come back in towards the head. I'm going to go all the way across towards the opposite side of the circle. Now in this area, I'm just going to round up the jaw. I'm going to go up and then down towards the right. Let's go back to the left, curve the mouth, coming down and then out towards the end, right about there. Let's flatten off the bottom of the chin. I'm just going to pull this up and then across towards the outside of the jaw. Now I want to draw the inside of the mouth along the bottom. So we're going to step up here. I'm just going to taper this down and then out towards the edge of the mouth. Now you want to give the head a slight angle. So we're going to see that back antler going up and out towards the top. Flatten off the top. And then again, just taper this back in towards the top of the head. Now around the front, we're just going to add the eye. Right up here, curve this up. Just following this line, come down. From the front, go out and just tuck that up underneath. Now there's a fur detail around the outside of the jaw. So starting up here, we're just going to add a guide going out, come around and just tuck that in underneath the jaw. Now you want to add a guide for those two whiskers coming down from the nose. So we're going to start up here, come across. I'm just going to go across the jaw, bend this up, go across the body and then out towards the end. Let's add that back whisker. We're going to start down here, curve around, and pull that in towards the side of the neck. I'm pretty happy with the composition of our rough sketch. Let's go back and lightly raise some of these guidelines. We're going to start on the inside, taking out that circle. Now with our clean rough sketch, we want to go back and add a second level of detail. Now I'm going to start with that fur along the back side. We're going to use our side edge of our pencil and just add a gesture for the fur, starting from the edge of the jaw, pulling this up and out. So it's going to work our way down. And this is just to follow the curve of the fur. And it's going to switch our directions, going out and up, and then bend that back down around the jaw. Now let's add those fins along the back of the spine. Starting at the top, it's going to go up and pull it back down towards the back. Let's continue around the side. Now we just want to get the right shape and volume. We don't have to get too detailed at this stage. Just working our way down and in. Go all the way down towards the bottom. Now these antlers branch off along the end. So let's start up here, go up and out. Flatten this off, and it'll go wider as you come back in towards the center. 
Let's go to the outside, do the same thing. Going out, flatten this off, and then taper that back in. Let's do the same thing across that back antler, going up and back in. And this one's just gonna layer it in behind. Now I'm gonna separate the head from the antlers with a curve across the base. Now I'm gonna layer the back brow in behind. I'm just gonna curve this up and just tuck that in towards the side. I'm gonna add a little bit more shape to the top edge of the mouth. It's gonna be outside. I'm just gonna curve this around and down. Bend that up, come down. I'm just gonna wrap this around the jaw. Let's add a wave across the bottom, going up and then down and across. It's gonna round out the jaw and take out those sharp points. Now I'm gonna add two large fangs along the front. So up here, add the first fang coming down and in, taper that up, and move to the outside and draw that again. And then we add two small teeth on the inside going in between. And then from the right, we're just gonna work our way over towards the corner of the mouth. Just adding these small teeth. Let's add that cartilage with a curve on the end. Now I wanna do the same thing across the bottom. Start with that large fang on the end, leave a gap, draw that same size fang on the inside and then draw two small teeth in between. And we'll just work our way back in towards the inside. Now once we're happy with the rough sketch of our drawing, we're gonna go in with the temper pencil and start refining the shape and adding some more details. Now I always like to start with the eye. Let's start by folding up the brow, and just working our way across the top. Now as we go, I'm just gonna find opportunities to add some folds. A little bit of wrinkling coming around the eye and just tucking that up underneath. Now from the eye, we're just going to work our way out. Just going to add some folds underneath. Let's go to the top of the brow. Come down the side. We're just going to work our way up towards the edge of the antler. Now from here, I'm just gonna layer that whisker on top of the mouth. I'm just gonna fade that out towards the nose. So we start with the bottom edge first. And we can always just change up the shape a little bit if we need to. I'm probably gonna to wanna to wrap this whisker around the back. So we're just gonna come down and just stop right about there. Let's go back and draw on the top. I'm just going to add some folds around the jaw. Go back and add in the nostril. And we'll just darken up the inside along the top and just fade that out towards the left. Now at this stage, all I wanna do is just trace out the contours first before we get into the shading. So 
Oh, la petite. And then along the inside of the mouth, just gonna add the edge of the tongue. It's coming down, add that fold, and then the back side of the mouth. And we're just gonna add the silhouette of some teeth along the back side. And we just wanna pull these in between, working our way back. And now we're gonna move up and add some detail to those antlers. These antlers kinda of look like wood. Just gonna round up the tops. Just bring that in. And adding a little bit more shape along the outside edge. Making it look a little bit more organic. I don't want it to be too straight. I'm just gonna branch this off a little bit more on the end. And then just draw in the back. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of wood grain along the inside. So starting from the ends, just pulling these lines coming in, and then from the base, working our way up. Now from here, we're just gonna add some texture and volume to that fur around the neck. So going back to the side edge of our pencil, we're gonna start from the top, it's gonna add some volume and texture, just following these curves as guides, and just kind of filling in the spaces in between. And then again, just changing directions and going in behind this whisker. So we just wanna go a little bit darker along the edge of the head, and then just fade that out towards the ends. I'm just gonna tuck that up underneath the head. And now I'm gonna go back to the tip of my pencil and add some more detail. So again, starting from the edge, just gonna work our way around the jaw, just defining those fibers. Now we're gonna go up and work away from the outside coming in. So adding these little points and just fading that in towards the side. I'm just gonna go back and just darken up the base of that fur. Almost like creating a little bit of shadow. I'm just gonna darken up that center seam. Just tuck that up underneath the fur. And I'm just gonna sketch out some ribbing across the front of the body. So adding these little curves going across and up underneath. And I'm just gonna round this out. Add a little bit of shading along the bottom and then just blend that up.
and a little bit of texture going across the front of the belly. These little lines and curves. And now we're gonna get into the shading. We're gonna start by adding an even shade to the back side of the body with the side edge of our pencil. Now this is just to fill this in first before we get into the details. I'm just gonna darken up that back whisker to almost push it into a silhouette. Also with the back of the teeth. I'm just gonna darken up the inside of the mouth. And then we're gonna darken up the top of the tongue and then fade that out as we come down. Now this is sort of where the light catches the edge of the tongue. Now we're gonna go back and add that medium shade across the top of the head, starting from the front of the beak. And it's okay to be a little bit rough with the shading. It's going to help with the texturing as we layer in the scales. Now at this stage, we want to create a consistent direction for the light and shadow. So here I want to imagine that the lights come from the top left of our page across our character. So the highlights will sit along the top and the shadows will come down underneath. So let's start with the antlers. We start along the bottom with the shadow, and then we're just going to blend that up towards the highlight. Just working our way up towards the top. And then go back and just smooth this out. Now to help to give this some roundness, we're gonna bring that shadow line along the inside. So we start with a dark line going up in an angle, and I'm just gonna fade that out as we go up. And this is our core shadow line. And then along the bottom, I'm just gonna have some light reflecting back up to create a little bit of a highlight. Let's do the same thing across these smaller antlers, and then just blending that out. Now let's add some shadows to the teeth, starting off dark along the top, and then just blending that down. So the edge of the mouth is just casting a shadow along the top of the teeth. I'm going to go a little bit darker around the eyes to make the eyes look like they're glowing. Just continue that shadow line across the top.
I'm going to add those shadows across the jaw, again, just going darker along the bottom. So this is the furthest point from the light source. And then just blending that up towards the highlight along the top. I just want to blend that out. Now let's go to the back and adding that shadow and then fading that forward towards the left. Let's add that core shadow in the middle and then just blend that up. Now you want to fade that out towards the left and right side. Now we're going to go in and start layering those spikes in behind the body and just adding a little bit more shape and shading. We'll go in behind that whisker. And just tuck that whisker in behind. I don't have to get too detailed as we come down towards the bottom of our page. So we're going to add some texture. And the body's casting a shadow across the base. So going dark and then blending that out. And I want this whisker. I want this whisker to cast a little bit of a shadow just underneath across the body. So we're just going to darken up the bottom edge. Blend that down. And this will sort of help frame that whisker and just pull it out from the background. Now let's go in and start adding some texture and scales to the head and body. So we're adding these little backward C's with the side edge of our pencil. And just working our way across. Just fading that out towards the highlights. We do the same thing across the body, starting from the bottom and just working our way up with almost these U shapes, just so we're working with the curve of the body. shadow across the top of the eye and then fade that down. Now I'm just adding a little bit more texture to the lower jaw. So with these little curves just lightly going across. And we're also going to do the same thing to these whiskers. Just adding these little swirls inside. Now right about here, I'm just going to finish this off by signing my artwork, but you're more than welcome to continue adding some more detail. I hope today's lesson gave you some insight on how you can create a dynamic character by starting out with the basic shapes first. We'll continue to explore texture and shading in future tutorials. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.